a welcome to our Mass here at St. Patrick's Church Hill for Tuesday in the sixth week of the Easter season. Let us rejoice and be glad and give glory to God. For the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. As we prepare to celebrate the mystery of Christ's love, let us acknowledge our failures and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, my almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, almighty and merciful God, that we may in truth receive a share in the resurrection of Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The crowd of Philippians joined in and showed its hostility to Paul and Silas. So the magistrates had them stripped and ordered them to be flogged. They were given many lashes and then thrown into prison and the jailer was told to keep a close watch on them. So following his instructions, he threw them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. Late that night, Paul and Silas were praying and singing God's praises while the other prisoners listened. Suddenly, there was an earthquake that shook the prison to its foundations. All the doors flew open and the chains fell from all the prisoners. When the jailer woke and saw the doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to commit suicide, presuming that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted at the top of his voice, don't do yourself any harm, we are all here. The jailer called for lights, then rushed in, threw himself trembling at the feet of Paul and Silas and escorted them out saying, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They told him, Become a believer in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, and your household too. Then they preached the word of the Lord to him, and to all his family. Late as it was, he took them to wash their wounds, and was baptised then and there with all his household. Afterwards, he took them home and gave them a meal, and the whole family celebrated their conversion to belief in God. The word of the Lord. I thanks be to God. Our response is, your right hand has saved me, O Lord. Your right hand will save me, O Lord. I thank you, Lord, with all my heart. You have heard the words of my mouth. Before the angels, I will bless you. I will adore before your holy temple. Your right hand has saved me, O Lord. I thank you for your faithfulness and love, which excel all we ever knew of you. On the day I called, you answered, you increased the strength of my soul. Your, your right, right hand, hand has saved me, O Lord. Lord. You stretch out your hand and save me. Your hand will do all things for me. Your love, O Lord, is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. 
Your right hand has saved me, O Lord. We acclaim the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. I will send you the spirit of truth, says the Lord. He will lead you to the whole truth. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Now I am going to the one who sent me. Not one of you asked, Where are you going? Yet you are sad at heart because I have told you this. Still, I must tell you the truth. It is for your own good that I am going, because unless I go, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I do go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will show the world how wrong it was about sin, and about who was in the right, and about judgment. About sin, proved by their refusal to believe in me about who was in the right, proved by my going to the Father, and your seeing me no more, about judgment, proved by the prince of this world already being condemned. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. I think it's quite helpful for us to think about what it was like for those early disciples after Jesus' death, resurrection, and ultimately his ascension. Initially, of course, it was devastating for them because they'd pinned all of their hopes on this charismatic figure whom they believed to be the Messiah. Jesus, of course, had brought the good news about the extraordinary love that God has for us. And the disciples saw that love in action. They saw Jesus' love and compassion that led him to heal the sick and the crippled, even to restore some dead people back to life again. They saw Jesus' mercy in action. And repeatedly they heard him say, your sins are forgiven, go now in peace. They saw the loving outreach of Jesus to the poor and the marginalised. I think there's a, quite a powerful sentence in the gospel there where it says, Jesus says, it's for your own good that I'm going. Because if I do not go, the Holy Spirit will not come to you. Jesus was really saying to the disciples that it was now up to them. Under the guidance of the Spirit, to be the bearers of the good news to the world. The news that our ultimate fulfillment is in being people of love, compassion, and justice after the style of Jesus. That meant that the disciples had to take on the responsibility now themselves of spreading that good news worldwide. Not just telling others about it, but by living out that belief in a very practical and down-to-earth way, and in the process, being enormously enriched by the experience. And of course, it's the same for us today. We too need to take responsibility for the way in we, which we live our lives, allowing that same spirit of love to guide us. Christian life's not about keeping lots of rules and ticking boxes for things done but it's about 
the movement of the heart that affects our relationship with God and with each other. This period of the pandemic has temporarily taken away lots of our familiar structures, but I think it also offers opportunities for us to take more responsibility for the way in which we live our lives. And we live our lives that way because we believe in the gospel of love. To get through this challenging time, we certainly depend greatly on each other. So as we share the Eucharist now, let us pray that the Spirit may guide us to new and fulfilling ways of living out the gospel of love right now in this rather awkward and uncertain time. Looking out for others, easing the burdens that others carry, and in the process, being greatly enriched ourselves. We have an, on our altar today the bowl of intentions for people who have asked us to pray specially for their special needs. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed Blessed be God. Mystery of the water and wine, come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from sin. And now let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us lift up our hearts. We lift them up to the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For, for with the old order destroyed, the universe cast down is renewed and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, 
and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts were brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, Jesus himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, <clears throat> as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. <coughs> may he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, and Anthony, our Bishop, all the bishops and clergy and the entire people you have gained for yourself. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Saviour's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. And you say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. The Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead and so enter into his glory. Alleluia. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, your prayers that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us, may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks. Thanks.